Get ready to get your questions answered by financial advisors. Learn how to put more money back in your pockets regardless of where you're starting your financial journey with your host, Hannah Mitria. So Matt, I'm super excited to have you back on, finishing up, going over my assessment. And I know we're taking this deep dive into it. So we're really looking at like every piece of it, including the things that may not be related to me so that any listener that's here can, you know, listen to this and kind of get an idea of, Hey, I need to take this assessment too. Um, so I know that when you do an assessment with an actual client, <laughs> right. it does not take this long. So anyone listening, just know he's going to focus on the things that are key for you. And we're going to wrap up this with some of the final things that aren't high on mine. So these are some things that maybe we wouldn't be talking about if we were actually having a, an assessment, but are things that you know many of your clients are going to be facing. And so you're going to be talking to them about that. But before we jump back in, can you share with us again, Matt, about you, your company, and then we're going to jump into the six other things. Yeah, sure. So again, uh, it's Matt Francesco. I've been in uh, financial services for the last 16 years. And my focus has been in with the small to mid-sized family business, kind of helping them to navigate all the intricacies of that business. And my particular focus now is, is in the automotive repair, or automotive collision space. But I work with a number of different family businesses that are out there. So that's why I think this stuff is so important because many times, many family businesses have never really thought beyond what's happening on the day-to-day basis. And these are really critical things because, you know, life throws wrenches to you and you need to be prepared for that to both not only protect yourself, but to protect your family and your business. So that's where I think a lot of these, um, these considerations come in. All right. Awesome. And I know I want to make sure I say at the beginning, we said at the end last time, but everything we talked about is not financial advice. We are just going over a report and not advising, but explaining and sharing the stories and the processes with you. So if you're listening and you want to get financial advice, you contact Matt to actually have hire him and retain mm-hmm. him as your financial advisor. And like you right. said, yes, he does have a niche in the automotive and collision industry, but he works with family businesses from all over. We were just talking about yeah. how he works with a direct marketing company as well, yeah. doing their finances. So really wherever you're at, if you're in a family business or small business, contact Matt for your financial needs. But this podcast is purely educational based and that's what we're here for. Right. But I want to lead into the family part of it. You mentioned, you know, how family is such a big part. And, you know, that's something that's not big on my chart because, you know, my daughter is 14 and has no interest in marketing. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, she, she's 14 and has interest in makeup and TV and books. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. So of course she's not in my plan right now. Of, oh, you're going to take over this business. So let's touch on, you know, as a family dynamic where there is a family member that's super involved in the, the shop and maybe they want to take over the shop. I know Last week, we were mentioning how even dividing between two, where the daughter is going to do the operations, the son is going to do more of the actual like nitty gritty and working in the shop part of it. Mm -hmm. So what are some family considerations and family succession? How do you work somebody through that process? Well, the first step again is, is, and we talked about this earlier, I think the family meeting is vital in all of this because we've got to get all parties involved and get a lot of these things onto the table. They're not discussed in families. I mean, because typically we're busy doing so. We're running our businesses, you know, kids have, you know, when they're young, they've got dance, they've got sports and everybody's running around. You kind of sit down, wolf down your food and you're on to the next thing. And then all of a sudden, then the kids may come into the business and even then, you know, they're busy working in the business and it's kind of the day-to-day grind stuff. I think the other issue that comes, and and this is really funny because I see this all the time, that the owners, the founders, which are many times the parents, they just naturally assume that the kids know this stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what happens is a child comes into the business. The parents just naturally assume that they know what we know. They think Mm -hmm. they learn it through osmosis. And then the kids are in there in a deer in a headlight, uh, you know, with it, like looking like a deer in the headlights. And all of a sudden now creates this friction because now the parents are like, what's wrong with them? You know, there were, there's nothing wrong with them. They've never learned the business. You know, Mm -hmm. I talk about, I think I I talked about this in, in the earlier episode in the family meeting, I have, 
I, I usually have the founders tell their story to the rest of the family because many times they don't know those stories and they don't know the blood, the sweat, the tears that, that they went through to build this thing up. And the other thing that I always tell the kids is that you need to understand something, especially if this is a business that was founded by you know, mom and dad, that this is just like a child for them. It's something that they gave birth to. It's something they've nurtured. It's something that they've helped to grow up. And so they're almost going to have an attachment to it like they have to you. And sometimes letting go of those strings is really hard for them. So you have to set, you know, that's a lot of what I do is setting the expectations both with the parents, but then also with the kids Mm -hmm. so that, you know, now they start to understand each other a little better. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's wonderful too to set those expectations. And it's like how you related it where, you know, d- it is hard for us to let our kids go to college or, yeah. you know, go to school dances, even at the beginning, go to kindergarten, you know, yeah. letting go of those things. And that is definitely how our business is too. And to be able to let it go. So I, I love that you set up those expectations. And you mentioned how sometimes like they don't understand all the intricacies of what goes into the business. So what are some things that you do and steps you take to help get the child or not a child anymore, but you know, the person right. that you're leading it onto from the family member to learn those intricacies to be able to take over? Well, I, I think the first step is really finding out what that child's passion and interests are. So, you know, Mm -hmm. we talked about doing the personality tests, Mm -hmm. you know, we talked about doing the value drivers report, those type of things. And what we want to try to do is identify where their skill sets are. You know, Mm -hmm. if if you have a child that's maybe more, and I I use the disc method and uh, I don't know if you're familiar with disc, (laughs) but disc D's are typically your dominant direct. They're your leader types. I's are inspiring, uh, influencing kind of the life of the party people, your S's are very steady status quo. And then your C's are cautious, calculating. They're like your engineer types, detail oriented. Mm -hmm. So when we do these personality, we can kind of find, all right, where are they? I mean, if they're, if they're a SC, that might not be the best leader. Maybe Mm -hmm. you want one of the children that's, that's a DI to to do that. So I think helping to um, identify that, but that being said, Even if if a child isn't maybe wired that way, but has an interest in that, Mm -hmm. we can start to help them to become more of that type of leader because Mm -hmm. your personality type doesn't always necessarily determine that you're going to be an effective leader or not. All right. It's really about how much you're willing to take on the leadership, but we want to make sure we have the right people in the right seats. So for example, you know, as I told you in my uh, propane business client, you know, the son is very operational. He loves working on equipment. He loves digging. He loves, you know, all those things. The daughter, she is much more administratively. She's much more detail oriented. She's a C. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's an SC. So Looking at that, it's it's telling me and where I'm guiding the families to say, all right, well, if we're going to look at a dual ownership or they're going to basically be uh, running it in conjunction with each other, then, you know, the daughter, she should be doing the administrative end because that's where she's wired mm-hmm. operationally because you like the mechanical end. But then I have to develop a synergy between the two of them that they mm-hmm. understand that one's not impo- more important than the other. Mm-hmm. So it's about, again, managing the personalities that are there, too. So I think that's really the first thing is identifying where their skill sets are, where their interests are, and then starting to guide them into the the best roles that are going to be appropriate for them. Yeah, it's sounding like that you really have to be a psychologist (laughs) to do your job at this point. You're a big Exactly, exactly. And I know like you probably have, have had families come to you or maybe currently where, you know, maybe they thought their child was going to take over the business and you have those conversations and you know, that kid has no interest in it. They just have the obligation. They feel like, what do you do in those kind of situations? Those are ways to overcome it. Or do you start looking outside? Like, Talk me through some of those situations. Yeah. So probably the first step that I have the, that I had the owner is, is let's start looking through their employee roles and who are their key people. Uh And then kind of going through the same process with them. What are they capable of? And maybe even we talk to them too, because maybe one of them have, uh, has an interest in, 
and taking over the business. Mm -hmm. And that's actually, I mean, one of the uh, collision shops that I work with, that's kind of the case that we are now. We have a younger son who has decided to take leadership, but also the key guys expressed a lot of this. And luckily, the synergy between them is very good. Mm -hmm. So now we're looking at they're going to be the leadership team on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what we're developing. That's the process that we're developing with them. So, you know, again, it's about training. All right. Mm -hmm. Some of it is just leadership training, which, you know, my, my 30 years of personal development, I think has equipped me to be able to give guidance in those areas and help them to start to learn the skills that it takes to become a leader. Uh, But again, if we start to get into operational things, I have experts in many different of these business areas who are operation specialists in that particular industry, which we will bring in to help them on that aspect. And then I just help to coordinate the whole solution. I I make sure that all all, all the loose ends are tied up is really what it comes down to. So it's almost like a conductor in an orchestra. You have all these moving parts, but it's a conductor that keeps, uh, you know, keeps all the instruments together to create the beautiful symphony. And that's really what my role is. Yeah, awesome. Each person's financial plan is different. To take your financial assessment with Matt, go to highliftfinancial.com and click Let's Talk. Continue on to the next episode now to learn about business consideration and income needs. We discuss both things you can do as you continue on your business and to plan for exiting. Thank you for joining us this week on the Virtual U.S. Financial Advisor Podcast. Subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or via RSS so you'll never miss an episode. We'd love rating on iTunes or better yet, tell a friend about the show, which will help us grow as well. If you want to learn from any of our financial advisors, head over to our website, virtualusfinancialadvisor.com to learn more about each financial advisor and connect with them personally. Be sure to tune in next week to get more advice from the expert financial advisors. See you on the next episode.